Okay, so welcome to today's pump chat series. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most popular wearables on the market for good reason, and that is the Willow Go. So this is a pump that we absolutely love, but at the same time has a lot of things that I want you to know about before you decide if this is the right pump for you, because for every good thing I can tell you about the Willow Go, it comes with a but of something I really think you need to know before jumping in. So let's just talk about what this pump is. This is a smart wearable. It is fully controllable by an app. You have the ability to turn it on, turn it off, start, change levels, change modes. It does not have any programmable features. You literally just have the ability to change between stimulation and expression. It does stay on simulation mode by itself for about two to three minutes before it'll switch over to expression automatically, but you have full control over the settings at all times, so you can easily move it to whatever settings are working best for you, and it can be controlled by your phone. This pump is a unique design in that, unlike other wearables, which tend to be some type of bottle or reservoir on the bottom and a motor towards the top, this is a donut-shaped motor. It is the only one we have on the market like this. So you have a couple different parts. This is what is referred to as your container. And then this green part in here is your duck bill. You can see the duck bill is nice and large, but it is a silicone material that is known for holding milk fat, which is also one of the things that we wanna point out is when you take this apart, the only thing holding this together is the seal created by pressing this plastic piece down onto this silicone rim. And then this is actually silicone. So this is silicone on silicone. Silicone is naturally slippy, so when we are slippery, so when we add in milk fat, which is going to be contained in human milk, it's just the nature of it. If we refrigerate it and that milk fat solidifies here, then we do have some problems keeping this in place. These also like to stretch out, so you do have to periodically boil them to keep them in shape, but your container is that easy to assemble. It just goes together very nicely. And that is all we have with that. Now you have your motor, which is this donut shaped hub right here. And you've got your silicone diaphragm. Again, this likes to stretch. It likes to get milk fat on it. It does require a little bit of extra attention with washing, but this just pops into place. And then you take your container back here, clamshell this together, and then insert that. Now you just saw how easy that was for me to assemble. It's not super complicated, but I can assemble it this easily because I've done this probably several thousand times now. There is a learning curve to it. It does not matter how experienced of a pumping parent you are, how many pumps you've played with, learning how to align all of these parts when you've got silicone seals involved, you've got this round diaphragm that you have to get it into without crushing it or deforming it. This can be a little bit tricky. It does require a little bit of learning. Everybody is going to have to practice with that until you get the muscle memory. Because if you don't, then what happens is your pump ends up coming apart when it shouldn't be. And sometimes we will see that, you know, if this isn't quite right, when you take this off, we'll have flanges that pop out. We'll have containers that aren't staying sealed like they're supposed to, duck bills that are falling through. The assembly of this pump is one of the biggest challenges. The second challenge that comes with it is washing it because we have two big silicone parts that like to stretch, they like to hold milk fat. We have to come up with a wash routine that's gonna work for a combination of your water, your needs. Some people need to fridge hack, some people don't. This is not one I recommend if you need to fridge hack. If you need to fridge hack, I would actually recommend getting multiple sets of these parts. They do collapse down quite nicely. So in the average size pump bag, you can easily fit up to five or six sets of these. Um, so that is that is really nice. There is an alternative to fridge hacking because you can get all of these parts in where some of them are fairly bulky. So we have a hard time with fridge hacking. We have a hard time with washing. We get lots of residue. This pump does have vibration to it, which I absolutely love. So this is going to be the closest to a Spectra that you can put in your bra. In terms of cycle speed and suction, this pump is going to match the Spectra fairly well in terms of it does not have as many settings, but if you are somebody who's using faster cycle speeds and lower suction on the Spectra or somebody that's using higher, higher suction and lower cycle speeds, which is the two most common combinations, this is going to match it really, really well. 
Now this is not like the Willow 3.0 or Willow 360. This is not a constant suction pump. This is a traditional pull and release. So the suction is gonna pull and then it's gonna drop down. It's gonna pull and then it's gonna drop down. That vibration effect is going to allow most people to stay on the lower settings. So it is going to make it a fairly gentle pumping experience for most people. The biggest things we see with this is for some people, it's just not strong enough. It tops out. They advertise it as topping out at 280 or they, they were until recently. And when it originally launched, yeah, it got 270, 280. We had no concerns with that. After the first update, we did see a lot of changes and that's really common with Willow. One of the things to know before you get involved with Willow is that they like to kick out software changes and software updates, not tell you what it's doing, change your suction patterns, because they're using it to address a quality issue with the pump because their pumps are not often tested as much as you would think before they're kicked out to the general public. That's an issue with all pump companies, but in particular, these are more vulnerable. So the lack of full testing can be a challenge. So when this kicked out, it easily got 270 to 280 mmHg, which is really good suction. And then they had to ramp it back. So right now it tops out about 245, 250, which is still really significant. That's gonna top out at the same level as the Medela Symphony, but it's not the same type of motor as the Medela Symphony. So that 250 may not be enough suction for a lot of people, especially if you have breast tissue that is maybe a little bit squishier, absorbs the suction a little bit better. That is a challenge. So it also comes with 21 and 24 millimeter flanges. And you can get inserts there is a 27 millimeter option still i believe but most people are going to need the 24 with inserts and willow does have inserts in 13 15 17 19 and 21 so and their their inserts are really nice they're designed for this and they do have a wide array of accessories that are designed to help support your needs with the pump so that's where we have the pump case that's where we have um, they do have a milk cooler it's not one of the ones that i would recommend that you look at but they have the case which means a lot of people originally were having trouble. The buttons right here on this pump are really sensitive, but that is what actually releases your container. So you can see you have to push those in in order to release the little clips there. These are getting damaged in bags. If you put this in your bag and this is getting depressed or shoved against something, it can start to damage it. That's going to cause that internal piece to start warping and then we end up with problems. So you definitely want to make sure this is protected if you're using it in a bag. But overall, this is a really solid wearable option. As long as you understand that you are going to have a learning curve, you are going to have to learn how to wash it, which could take a little bit of troubleshooting. It's the same as every other wearable in terms of flange sizing and bra fit are going to be vital. For this one, it gets a little bit more important because if you see this lovely plastic container, that can actually be changed by your bra fit. Um, so when you are wearing the wrong profit, you can actually deform it and cause this motor to start acting differently than it should. You can cause it to start overheating. There is an issue with this pump liking to essentially overheat. The circuit board is not super high quality. We are asking a lot of this pump. I've had engineers take it apart. They've looked at it with me and essentially what they're recommendation was if we want a pump with this much power to go in our bras, we would have to be looking at double the price point before we could even start talking about a pump that's not going to suffer mechanical failures. The great thing about Willow, they do offer a really great warranty. So you have a one year warranty with your pump or you can buy an extended warranty for two years. They're actually very easy to work with in terms of their customer service. Very rarely do I have a mom come back and say that they had a bad experience with customer service unless the mom was just got a nasty rep for some reason. I've had Willow products for years. I've had lots of interactions with their customer service and all in all, I've always been pretty satisfied with how things were resolved. You will likely need to use your warranty because it's not a matter of if your pump will die, it's when your pump will die. This is pretty much universal with all wearables, but this one likes to go in a very dramatic fashion. Some pumps like to give us a lead up warning that they're gonna die. This one just likes to die. It doesn't like to give us a lot of warning. We can almost always tie it back to it may, if it's accelerated, if you're seeing it die really quickly, it's probably something with franchising or profit. But even if you do everything right, if you're using this regularly, the motor is only rated for, I think, 250 hours. It's really not much. Um, looking over here in the comments, can we share about its learning curve? It's just a matter of you have to learn how to operate the pump because this pump is not as straightforward as say like a Zomi fit where assembly just 
is what it is and it all goes together and if it clicks in place it's working you do have a lot more opportunities here to mess it up and if you mess it up you can compromise your suction because all of your suction is going to be generated by the way that this diaphragm is wedged over top of let me pull this out so you can see there's a tiny little hole over here that if you actually turn your pump on you can feel the suction being generated all of the suction in your pump is coming from the pull here that is reliant on this diaphragm being properly inserted and properly in place and then this part being properly assembled and wedged in there just right so there is a little bit of a learning curve there any wearable is going to have a learning curve while you manage the profit and franchise that's pretty pretty much expected and universal um, the other thing to know about this is that the wearable or the replacement parts are a little bit more expensive than people expect I think a lot of that came from the fact that the Willow 3.0 at the time which was the the Willow generation pump that was available when this launched it was known for being expensive but it had a really high initial price tag so people weren't as surprised when this one came out it had a much lower price tag it's typically on sale between 250 to 325 and it's almost always on sale anymore if you see it at full price you probably want to wait another week or two because it will go back on sale it's always on sale but if you see that lower price tag you expect it to be a lower ongoing cost and that's just not necessarily true because we do see that the replacement parts do add up so your container if you hand wash it do everything nicely um, you tend to get about three to six months out of it most people get four to six months on average with the duck bill you're going to get about 60 to 90 days willow will tell you it's rated for 90 days but that's going to be rated for 90 days pumping only a few times a week with it it's going to be closer to 60 for most people because if you respond well to this you tend to want to use it because it is really convenient your diaphragm is again going to be 60 to 90 days and then your flanges are going to have to be replaced typically every four to six months because this is just a plastic I can actually pull this up so you can see it on the camera so this one sits on my desk so it gets lots of handling but if you see look at this surface see how it gets these scratches this is just because this plastic is fairly pliable and it is easy to scratch now if your pump parts are scratched it's not just an aesthetic concern that is a part that now has the ability to better hold biofilm and bacteria so when your pump parts are getting scratched up that's when you're going to want to replace them and that is what's going to drive the replacement of these containers and these flanges and the rate that it does. I will link the wearable pump calculator replacement parts below so that if you are looking at these pumps and you're concerned about your budget, definitely take a look at it. Calculate out in terms of how you wash your parts. Uh, if you put them in a dishwasher, they're going to wear sooner. If you put them in a sterilizer, they're likely to die next to immediately for this pump. If you, put, if you hand wash them, you're likely to see a little bit longer time frame. Most of us that had it in the initial days were completely happy to hand wash it and had really good results. We are seeing that more moms really want parts that can go in these sterilizers and this may not be the pump for you if that's the case. Because if you're looking for something that's going to be extremely durable, extremely easy to not abuse, but like to use and not have to think about, this is probably not the pump for you. This pump is finicky where this pump excels is that it's really quiet it has a very natural profile so they actually designed it so that the opening on this is going to sit in line with how most breasts are going to be shaped so yes it does increase your bust size in terms of the circumference but shape wise it actually is fairly discreet the average person is going to not really notice this when you're walking around with it unless they know you um, I thought they don't recommend going into the sterilizer they don't they don't but what I can tell you as somebody who is running a wearable pump group is that what the manufacturer says and what moms are actually doing with it are often in direct conflict with another with one another very few of my moms actually read the directions very few of my moms believe that these rules will actually apply to them um, because they just they have their own preferences on sanitizing parts and then they're really disappointed with the outcome because they may not connect that that part that they put into a sterilizer has prematurely failed within the first few days. It doesn't look like it's failed, but it's no longer generating the suction. So then they don't respond to the pump, but they don't necessarily connect the dots to say, you know, it probably wasn't necessarily the pump. It was probably how I washed it. So I give that general thing 
We also have lots of moms who are putting it into a sterilizer because sterilizers are not very regulated, so they don't all get to the same temperatures. Some are, you know, on the lower side, they're really just warming the parts up to dry them. Some of them are going so high that it's causing warping almost instantaneously. So I don't recommend them going in a sterilizer. I recommend hand washing the willow go parts, but lots of people do what they're gonna do. And we like to deal with the reality of that. So that is, that is kind of my spiel on the willow go. So I'd love to hear what your questions are, what you're wondering about this pump as you're deciding if it's the right pump for you. And you can either unmute and ask the questions live or you can throw them in the chat. Either way is fine with me. So are there, are there no questions about this pump? Is anybody concerned about anything in terms of deciding if it's for them? Okay, so then I guess I will go through a few more tips and tricks that we have learned with this pump that are ways that we've seen to keep it alive. The first being Make sure you're using the Willow chargers, whether they're plugged into a portable charging block, whether they are plugged into the wall. We want to make sure you're using the Willow chargers. This is sitting on a little bit of a funny angle and the Willow charger is designed to fit that. We have seen issues with people using alternate chargers and it either causing it to overheat and fry itself or we end up with bent uh, ports here, neither of which are super fun because when you do have to replace them, you do have to wait for the replacement to get to you. It almost seems like these things like to fail at end of business day at the end of the week. So it could be a couple days before you get your replacement. How does it respond with people with elastic nipples? So this is actually one of our more popular uh, pumps for elastic nipples. And the reason is look at this really long tunnel length. The willow inserts are really long. Um, we do have, these are May Mom inserts. You can see we can get them all the way in there and it's not compromising the suction. So we have the ability to use really long inserts with this. The big thing with elastic nipples is gonna be the bra fit. This pump is not small, it is not lightweight. It is not too heavy to wear by any means. It's actually quite comfortable to wear, but we have to get your bra fit correctly. And that's gonna mean we need to get that band really, really snug and we need to make sure that your cups are supportive and hugging the pump and keeping it properly upright without crushing it. It's very much a like Goldilocks situation where we're looking for that perfect fit. If you have elastic nipples, we really need to nail that fit because otherwise what ends up happening is if your bra fit is not right, it's either shoving it into the tissue, which if you think about if you shove something down into bread dough with an opening in the center, what's in the center is going to rise up. And that is what's gonna to happen to your nipple is it's going to push further into the pump and cause problems or it's going to tilt away because of poor support. And if it tilts away from your body because of poor support, then we're gonna see issues with the nipple stretching further than it should into the flange. So it works really well with elastic nipples as long as we nail that bra fit and flange size, which we do for people every single day. We have this down to an art. Um, how about those with large breasts? The size of your breast has nothing to do with your success with a wearable. Getting the right bra is what's gonna determine the success. So you could have extremely large breasts and be extremely successful with a wearable because we got you into a bra that is properly fitted for it. But we also have just as many moms with small breasts who are wearing a bad bra size who have the same problems as our large breasted mamas with bad bra size. Everything is going to come down to it's not, there's no one magical bra. There's no one magical bra solution out there. It's not about tight, it's about properly fitted. And some moms really struggle with that because a lot of companies give you very basic information. They also all tell you the only way to align your pump is to essentially dangle your breast into your pump. We have so many tips and tricks that we can teach you on how to work with your anatomy so that, you know, if dangling a very large breast, the larger the breast, the more likely that when you lean down, the breast is going to really dramatically change shape. So if you think about it, if you lean down into something and then the shape changes and we're trying to keep an object centered on it, where keeping it centered is essential to your success, 
it's not likely to work out. So we have lots of tricks. If you are struggling because you feel like maybe you have large breasts that are causing problems, we can help you with that. Um, again, there is no particular bra that works best. We have a whole list of them that we have heavily tested. Every time a new bra launches, my team and I end up buying these bras, putting them to the test with all these different wearables. We're testing to see which ones do they support, which ones just really don't work. Some bras have, you know, seams across the top that are really heavy that may not work with a certain wearable. PeriFit is a good example. PeriFit is a wearable that has a really round shape up top versus this nice slope of the willow. So the willow might do fine with a pump that has a tight seam right here, but the PeriFit couldn't operate with that. So it's about finding the right bra for your body, but then also, you know, some bras work better with some pumps than others. But unfortunately, we can't just make it down to any one particular bra. If you were really gonna press me and say, what is typically the bra that works? It's actually gonna be the Davin and Adley Amelia Cami. That is, almost universally a good fit for wearables. Very few moms struggle with wearables with that bra when we get it properly fitted. But again, it's still not 100%. That's just the one that we find is like the most common recommendation we make. Okay, what other questions? Has anybody here tried the Willow Go or tried another wearable and wants to compare the Willow Go to the wearable they've already tried? Okay, so it looks like maybe we do not have the most talkative bunch today, which is completely fine. I am going to go ahead and turn off the recording. This will be available live on YouTube afterwards. And if anybody has any questions that they wanna ask personally, I'll still be around for a few minutes after I turn off the recording. And then I'm happy to answer questions one-on-one -on -one with you anytime. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope that this gives you the information to really consider. Oh wait, hold on. I have cups but wondered about wearables since they say it doesn't empty the breast. You know, a lot of people say that wearables don't empty the breasts. I would say they don't necessarily know how to work with the wearables. Wearables are not going to typically be as effective at stimulating milk supply and emptying the breasts as a traditional pump, but there's a lot of times a traditional pump isn't necessarily feasible. It's all about working with what a mom uh, is really wanting to work with. You know, some people like wearing cups and they like doing with portable motors. I think that's going to be kind of a hybrid option. It is a little bit more effective. A true wearable, you know, the beauty of the true wearable is this whole thing is in your bra and it's, it's wireless. It is as discreet as possible. It's smart. It's attached to the app. I can put this on. I can go about my day while I'm pumping. I can control it from the phone. I'm not having to dig in my shirt. That is something that other pumps simply don't have the ability to do. But I do think that they work really well for a lot of people as long as you understand and it meets your goals. If you are trying to stimulate the maximum oversupply that you can, you're fighting for every drop of milk, maybe it's not the right option for you. And then we are always looking for what is going to be the better fit for you. Um, in terms of the concern being when it's a battle between eating lunch or pumping, this is where wearables shine. I am not the type of person who's ever going to tell you to miss lunch. Ever. I, I take my mealtime very seriously. I love food. So if you're having to choose between eating lunch or pumping, get yourself a wearable. Maybe it's not going to be the most efficient pump session you have. Maybe it's not going to stimulate as much supply as sitting down with like a traditional heavy duty, you know, workhorse pump would. But I don't think it's necessarily realistic to want to either lock yourself in your office for every lunch break, which is typically an opportunity for adults to interact in the workplace outside of just talking to your coworkers about work or not pumping. I think wearables are great for that. How would we compare this one to the Zomi Fit? I actually love them both. So let me grab a Zomi Fit to show you. So this is the Zomi Fit is going to be a less expensive wearable, but it is also a little less refined. This is not a smart pump. Willow is a smart pump. These parts are fairly basic and generic. This is going to give you just about the same range of motion. This is a little bit louder. This is definitely quieter. 
Uh, profile wise, I do think the Zomi Fit stands out more. Let me pull these down a little bit so you can see the Zomi Fit is definitely taller. And this is their updated Zomi Fit that has the milk sensor that we have not really been able to like adequately assess yet. But it is a little bit taller. It is a little bit more narrow, but it's also a much more obvious shape. So in terms of discrete or profile, I feel like this is a clear winner. This is a luxury pump. I would still classify this as a luxury pump, even with all of the issues I told you about. Every issue I told you about with this pump is something we can overcome. If you are willing to commit to the learning curve and not, you know, panic because somebody has to tell you that you can snap something together a little bit differently. Sometimes pride is what hurts moms on learning to use the Willow Go because it, it feels insulting when you're like, oh, you're just not assembling it right. Or, oh, you didn't measure for your bra right. And it's not, we never tell moms that with the intent of like insulting them as much as just saying, this is a really complicated finicky machine that requires a lot of nuance to make work. And here's the nuance that we think if you execute, you're going to see the results you're looking for. Because if Willow will give us a pump that doesn't require that, we would be in love with that idea, but Willow hasn't. They seem to enjoy watching us scramble a little bit when they kick out these pumps and having to figure out how to make it work. But we are always going to try and figure out how to make it work because for a lot of moms, this is exactly what they needed. And those tips and tricks are how they were able to achieve their goals with it. So it's a battle between the learning curve and measuring correctly. 100%. And measuring correctly is really hard. About 40% of moms struggle with self-measuring with their flanges. And I'd say closer to like 20 to 30 really struggle with measuring with their, for their bras. If you are doing everything right in your opinion, like if you've done all the things DIY, that's when it's time to get a professional involved to double check things. Cause sometimes we can spot like the one little teeny tiny thing that you missed, or you're in that percentage that it doesn't matter how much effort you put into it. You're just going to struggle and we can remove that struggle for you. We do, we do it all the time. We don't want you to struggle, which is why we spend so much time investing in learning these pumps. So any other questions? Okay. It looks like we've got through all the questions. So again, I'll still be around for a few minutes afterwards if anybody wants to ask questions um, not live. That's completely fine with me, but hopefully this helps you. If you have any more questions, join us over at the Wearable Pump Paperweight Prevention Group and let us help you. We, we know how to make these pumps run and we want to see you be successful with it. So just let us know what we can do to help you. And thank you guys so much for coming today. I hope this helps somebody.